Hi guys, Paul here from PA Brew News yet again. And uh, I'm on a roll right now. I just got done with one English ale from Witchwood Brewery, so I have another one here. Why not do it? Why not give it a go? Alright? This is Witchwood Brewery's Hobgoblin. Okay? Let me check this out for you, because I haven't looked at this yet. Okay, imported dark English ale. Alright. Because, um... I don't know why, and I really don't know why. The one I saw, I think someone reviewed it a long time ago. They called it a ruby ale. This one calls it a dark English ale. This is directly from England. And the one that I drank, a whole case of it, said brown ale. So I don't know what the hell is going on or what kind of ale this is, but at this point, right now, this is a dark English ale. Witchwood is just in, in, like kind of embossed. I don't know how you call that. Um, in the mold of the glass, it's in there. In the mold Witchwood and then the witches. I just love these bottles. They're so cool. So my Witchwood bottle is going to go in the garbage and this one's going to take its place because, well, one, it's the proper size and it's just cool. Imported dark English ale. Brew the roasted malt for a well-balanced, rich, smooth taste. A beer full of mischievous character, because it's a hob motherfucking goblin. And of course, a uh, product of England, Witchwood Brewery Company, Whitney, Oxfordshire, England, and Witchwood.com comes to us by Eurobrew. Alright, let's check it out. I will have to check out Eurobrews.com because they might be able to finagle things a little bit uh, and uh, get stuff to PA. I don't know. I talked to Belgian in a box, can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he basically said, we'll do whatever we can to get year the ales, because in PA, we have this whole thing where, oh, you can't ship ales to the mail, you can't do that, what are you talking about? See, there's the witch on this one, there's a hobgoblin on this one, really cool stuff. Hobgoblin has its own damn bottle cap. Um, I'm just going to go right off this, which is a nice subtle ale. I don't really think it's going to be too crazy. This should be a little bit more robust, so it shouldn't interfere. And I'm too lazy to go upstairs and clean it. So, there you go. If you want to come over and clean my glass for me, that's fine if you want to do that. But I'm not doing it right now. If anyone has a problem with that, just come on over. You can sit by me. I'll even share my beer with you. So I'm a nice guy. Well, look at that. Look at that head. That is beautiful. That is a thing of beauty. This is exactly the color. Slightly on the reddish hue of brown. And with a nice off-white, creamy head. This is exactly... Now, if this was a nitro, like a hand pull, a proper English hand pull, I would be just drooling all over my shirt because this is exactly the, the color and the, this, the look of an ale, especially English ales, that makes me just want to drink all of them and just die in happy drunkenness. Okay, let's see what we got going on. Clear as day. Clear as day. Mild carbonation. Okay, a little bit of that sulfide coming up. That Burton upon Trent water. Just chock full of minerals, apparently. Burton water is just. That was. A, I, I don't know if Bass is still there or not, but apparently Bass was located there. That was one of the major Burton upon Trent uh, breweries, was Bass. Definitely getting your roasted notes. I'm actually getting more. <clears throat> the, the, the flavor that's coming up in my nose is burnt toast. Kind of like brown bread crust burnt toast. Definitely getting that nice earth tone, kind of a um, like a, a little bit of a, of a bush leaf and some grass put together too. Very very herbal smell mixed with that nice earth tone. Okay, let's give it a go. Cheers. That 
is a lovely mouthfeel. It really is. It almost gave me a, a because I think I, I drank the head too, and the, the head was really, really creamy. I don't know why the head was that creamy, but it was, and it gave the ale that much more creaminess, and that was lovely. I probably won't get it again, because the head's almost gone, but that was nice. I got it again. Lovely, nice burnt bitterness to the end of it. Extremely smooth. All these nice roasted bitternesses are just bitternesses and snaggas. Or just playing around the front of your mouth or along your tongue. They're giving you faint hits of very, very faint hits of coffee. Definitely have your brown bread notes in there. Toast, burnt toast. The um, earth hops. Those, I think those fugly kind of earth hops, they're really doing their part. I don't really get that sulfide kind of, I think a little bit of the smell, but not the flavor. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Oh, come on. English is the best. They just are. That bread dough, kind of a sweet cookie quality it gives you the nice sweetness and everything else is just burnt and charred and nasty I love it you have that <coughs> cereal bread uh, cookie sweetness mixing with all the burnt toast the crust of the brown bread those lovely earth tones a bit of that herbal oh I have a hard time explaining some of those herbal notes because actually we say herbal but, you know what I mean, uh, is I, I have a hard time explaining that because not everybody has picked stuff off bushes and rolled them in their hands and smelled them and tasted them and, you know, not everyone's done that. So you go, oh, well, uh, and unfortunately I haven't learned specific plants to say, well, it was this type of plant or bush or this or uh, we were using juniper that time or I don't fucking know. I'd have a juniper bush outside. I was thinking about making gin. Hmm, that'd be fun. I have to do it outside so I don't blow up the dungeon, though. This is this is very nice. A little bit. I'll tell you what I do taste. Excuse me. A little bit. A little bit of a copper penny kind of a taste. Yeah, the Copper Penny is the only kind of off flavor that I'm getting actually from this. Other than that, it's very, very nice. A little bit of a refined roast to it. And it's playing off all those nice earth tones really well. Um, I find this extremely sessionable. And I have drank a case of this. Uh, it was quite a while ago now, but it was something that was really easy to drink. Um, I don't know if I have too much to say. Pretty good. Pretty good. About to Eric, E. Bomi, Banny, Brew Reviews. Is a cock in the hand worth two in the push? Two cocks in the mail worth four from the bush, maybe. Well, not now. What you got to do is challenge Kevin, but I, Kevin, I think it is Bush, to make two vaginas and their match sets, like holders, and you put them in there, and that's their holder. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Your wife's got a, it was a Mitsubishi 2000 GT. That's cool. Don't know actually know what the one of those looks like, but if it looks like anything like the Toyota 2000 GT from what 1966, fucking right. Best the best looking Toyota they ever made. Well, 
This again is lovely. It's sessionable, refined, a lot of nice notes going on. Very easy to drink. A little bit of that sulfide on the on the on the um, nose. A little bit of that, that kind of uh, copper penny on the taste. Those are the only two offs. But they're very nice, very nice. And um, I, I want to try a lot more from England. A lot more. I barely, I don't I wouldn't even consider that scratching the surface. I, I, can, I barely consider that peeling some of the paint off. I am so lacking on that. So I'd like to really get into that. But anyway, I'm going to give this one a 7. The Hobgoblin from Witchwood. I'm going to give it a solid 7 though. It's very, 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 very good. And lovely to session. Really tasty. No ABVs. I'd like to give you the ABVs, but I don't have them right now. So I'll post them later. Anyway, this has been Paul from BA Brew News. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.